Я так одиноко, даже посмотри Я не ходил со мной Глаза я так хотел бы снять руки Все снотворные давно уже на тур How's it going fellas, it's your feeling neighborhood with Crazy Fox and Nature 51 and this is going to be the final video before horror game season 2023. Which is that we're gonna be giving so I'm gonna be giving my opinions on the Home Depot 2023 lineup. I'm gonna do a Lowe's video soon. Then use Brick Thunder's footage. And for legal reasons, this is cream soda. I've been having water and coffee now, so it's up. But water is good, but coffee is with your heart desires. I will always find you. Ready or not, here comes the boogeyman, and you're it. <laughs> At a staggering eight feet tall, this big bad boogeyman is hell bent on one thing your soul. Tall, dark, and absolutely horrific, he's dressed in a slim black suit and spattered button-down with stringy black hair spilling down his gray, ghoulish face. Trigger his motion sensor and your worst nightmare comes to life. His eerie, skin-draped eyes and bony hands glow with bright white light. His arms reach out as he turns from side to side searching for you, his jaw moving up and down as he calls through web lips. I am inside your head. There is no escape. What happens when two become one? If the Boogie Monster has his way, you're about to find out. Happy Hot. Thanks for shopping at the Home Depot. Alright. So, honest opinions on the Boogeyman. Like. Uh, excuse me. Mechanism is pretty good. His movement is good. And I like the idea of how it's like, how he has long hair. And he doesn't have a mouth. Nor a nose. All he, all he has is eyes on the face. Like. It's honestly a really good character idea. Like, it looks like something out of a indie horror game, if you ask me. So, yeah. If I end up going to Home Depot to see their Halloween stuff, I'm looking forward to seeing it in person. Give me a sec. Ghost face mask be chilling up here. And of course, on my Twitch streams, I will wear that for five minutes for 420 points. And you can also see that my phone is in the charger right now. So, try to ignore that. And of course, I'm wearing pajama pants because it's normal for me to do whenever it's like the middle of the night and I know that sleepiness might kick in. Mortal, maybe, but not for long. The seven foot animated lethal lily, the witch, has got your scent, and she intends to keep it, mingling with the rotten stench of river monsters and beastly bog breathers. Standing seven feet tall, this wicked witch of the water is an imposing presence, practically dripping with the dregs of whatever cursed lagoon she slithered out of. <laughs> Her staff, fashioned from waterlogged wood, glows green with bright energy efficient LED light. Illuminating the crags and wrinkles of her decrepit, age-ravaged face. Her silver strands are capped by a big, bewitched hat, covered in green tatters. A dusty brown shroud and swamp-stained long skirt are held up by a braided belt. And a powerful polywog joins this marshland magician, 
covered in rich detail and green LED light. Watch uh -huh. this witch wiggle and servo motors and lethal Lily's head speak life into this soggy sorceress as she blinks her eager eyes, attempting to entice you with her realistic moving mouth. Oh, you want to leave? <laughs> it's well known that those who enter my lair never leave. <laughs> and your pain will last forever. Happy Halloween, and thanks for shopping at the Home Depot. Alright, so from when I saw the movement, it honestly reminded me of... It honestly feels like a Chuck E. Cheese animatronic. I'm not saying that in the bad way, I'm saying that in the good way. Because she looks like a Chuck E. Cheese... Because, like, the animation style plus the look makes her look like a Chuck E. Cheese animatronic that kids can be afraid of. And... Grim Projection said the same thing with Monty. So, oh, yeah. Also, to point out, like, something I've, like, had, like, a sharp eye on is that if you pay close enough attention to what's in the bucket, the frog is not the only thing in there. There's also a bottle. But there's two things that it can be a bottle of. It can be a bottle of water, or it can be a bottle of booze. Or it can also be a potion bottle. And for those who don't know what booze is, it's alcohol. Like, it could be beer, wine, vodka, rum, tequila. Just pretty much anything alcoholic, okay? Let's go. Ever wonder what it's like to be buried alive? Well, maybe tonight will be your lucky night then. <laughs> Fortune favors the bold, and if it's a treasure you seek, this gruesome grave robber might be the perfect person to help you find it. <laughs> that is, if you're willing to get your hands dirty. Dressed in blood-spattered clothing, a large overcoat keeps him covered in the darkest mausoleum, while his boots stay on the ready for the next job. His fearsome face is old and weathered, while silver hair sprinkles out and onto his tired shoulders, all covered by a dusty, dirty top hat. The things I've seen would make your skin crawl. This thrilling thief and his ornithological assistant have a penchant for the rich at rest, and they're itching to tell you all about it. When triggered, the grave robber readies his shovel, clenched by decrepited hands. Some folks get superstitious about digging up the dead. Well, I can't blame them. The things I've seen would make your skin crawl. The ever-watchful owl might like a treat or two for himself. His eyes glow bright yellow, keeping a lookout for the law. Or worse, fresh graves do seem to be popping up just about everywhere. Happy Halloween. And <sighs> Alright, so... The fact that he's a grave robber, that is fucking cool. Like, design, he just looks insane. And the idea of him having an owl on his shoulder, that is really cool. Like, you know, one, you want to know what this animatronic did? He gave me a new character idea for, like, a Disney universe that I'm willing to make called Clock Tower. So, yeah. But it doesn't have a logo yet. So, give it time, but the idea of Clock Tower is that it's basically a world, is that it's basically a steampunk world. And the protagonist is a mixture of a steampunk and a witch doctor. And he uses his witch doctor magic for good, instead of bad. So, there would be two Grave Watcher characters, a normal Grave Grave Watcher, well, no, Grave Digger, Grave Robber, Grave Watcher.
So, yeah. Those three things, that would be pretty cool for grave characters, for Clock Tower. Alright, let's get... Alright, now with that out of the way, without giving too much away, let's... Thanks for shopping at the Home Depot. Something wicked this way comes. Rising from the deepest layers of the spirit world, the nine-foot animated predator of the night returns to the land of the living. Hell bent on he stealing the soul sick. from your body and the breath from your very lungs. Standing a towering nine feet tall and with wings stretching twelve and a half feet wide, this satanic spawn is a sight to behold, if you should be so unfortunate. Get this demon to dance with death, and its head swings back and forth. Its LED-lit eyes glow bright red, and large ears and pointed teeth shape its skull, as roars and shrieks bellow from its moving mouth. Its posable arms move and hold their position, and more energy-efficient LEDs illuminate its massive, wondrous wings, drawing attention to their scarring and scaly detail. While enormous feet and hands pack a pernicious punch, it is no question the nine-foot predator of the night is a vision fit only for the damnedest of the damned, and all others should take heed. Happy Halloween, and thanks for shopping at the Home Depot. All right, like the predator of the night. Like if I had him, it would just be like this. Like, I don't know why I did that. But nonetheless, that is a pretty sick idea. Like. I wouldn't know if. Like, who knows if it's just going to be in the store. So if I'm going to see it in person or not. But if not, then I know that there can like be some like. Other neighbors that I can like see like the houses of. Like. And of course, I'm still thinking on who I want to be for Halloween. Like, I was the Robert Patterson Batman for Halloween last year. And this year, I am not 100% sure on who I want to be. Like, I can possibly be my horror game season mascot, Kallik, for Halloween if I cannot decide or if I don't get a costume this year. So, in other words, I can be a D, I can be, like, a demon that is in human form for Halloween. So, yeah. Marsh Monster is next. When it is dark and the path draws to a narrow, tread lightly. For the seven-foot marsh monster is only a slash and a slice away. You have already reached the point of no return. A fantastical fright. The audio. This wondrous beast bears an enormous set of realistic antlers, perfect for gnashing and goring his way through a fright night feast. Its wild green hair, large snake eyes, and menacing mouth with razor-sharp incisors fill the darkness with bright, energy-efficient LED light. Its arms and legs stretch long, draped in gauze and torn, tattered fabric. Sharp, pointed claws threaten to dig deeply into the flesh of anything or anyone that crosses its path. Don't believe me? Make this marsh monster move, and it springs to life. Its head and arms move up and down, body side to side, and it begins to speak, putrid promises pouring from its ravenous, 
synchronized mouth. This swamp is a graveyard of those who have dared to trespass into my swamp. Can't wait to hear what comes next. But with the seven-foot marsh monster, the story always ends the same. Rest in peace. Happy Halloween, and thanks for shopping at the Home Depot. Alright, in my opinion, the Marsh Monster is so far the worst animatronic of Home Depot, because... I honestly... do not like the voice. Like... Whoever hired that voice actor made the wrong decision for this guy. That Bruh. Like, he should have done some growling. Not talk. Like, the voice is so bad, the... The phrases is cringe. It's cringe. Who thought of this idea? Hell nah. Like, that's a one out of ten for... Like, that guy is the Johnny Punk of Home Depot, in my opinion. It's just... Hell nah. Like, that thing can just burn... Like, that thing can go burn. I'm not gonna fucking do this shit. Alright. Swamp Fisherman? It's a perfect night for fishing. Pull up a chair and prepare to oh. get hooked. Because no one spins a fish tail quite like the six and a half foot animated Swamp Fisherman. This all but dead angler doesn't look the least bit seaworthy sitting there in his old rocking chair, dressed in dirty ripped jeans, an old tattered flannel, and a fisherman's cap and vest. You best be careful and take your leave now. His sunken eyes burn red with energy efficient LED light, illuminating his gray rotten skin and long silvered hair. And it doesn't take long to see that the catch on his line is a little less than fresh. Rotten to the bone, his piranha's eyes glow a ghostly green. Its sharp teeth and moving mouth nipping at the line. This frightening fisherman rocks back and forth as he begins to speak. He has quite the story to tell, and if you're not careful, it just might be the last one you hear. Hey, get away from my catch. This is mine, you varmint. Now that's a tale with bite. Happy oh, Halloween, good. and thanks for shopping at the Home Depot. Okay, that fisherman animatronic? He looks pretty good. Like... I'm not exaggerating, like, the, I'm not even exaggerating, like, he looks, he looks pretty good. Like, I have never seen a retail company pull off this idea, and Home Depot did a good job for being the first one to pull this idea off. It's pretty good. Looking forward to seeing it in person, and if I have the money for this guy, I would buy him. Just so that I can have him sit in the background. <laughs> just have like an animatronic. Just like have a Halloween animatronic sit in the background so that I can like have a fuck ton of memes. <laughs> and I can just joke around and say, hey, he caught my phone while he, he was fishing. <laughs> But if it's like a, but if it involves a rocking, ch but if the rocking chair doesn't come with, at least I can have him sitting on my couch. But if it does, I could probably use him during Halloween time. Just have him as a porch animatronic. While my parents give the kids in the neighborhood candy. Alright.
If you thought the children of the corn were the scariest thing on the farm, wait till you see the seven foot tall animated swamp scarecrow. Truly outstanding in his field, this worrisome watcher keeps a constant vigil, his eerie eyes glowing a ghoulish green, brightly lit by energy efficient LED light. Let the harvest begin! <laughs> the swamp scarecrow's bare fleshless ribs poke through layers of tattered and torn cloaks. This swamp thing swipes. His burlap draped mouth screams into the marsh as his straw stuffed arms suddenly snap closed, trapping you in. When the crow calls twice, don't be surprised. When I reach out for you! <laughs> don't say we didn't warn you. The swamp scarecrow always demands a sacrifice. Happy Halloween, Beep. and thanks for shopping at the Home Depot. That is the case with everyone. With, well, no, with every jump scare in Matronic, like, depending on, like, how the backstory is and what type of character it is. So, yeah. And, of course, I agree on the fact that the idea, the concept of arms, like, closing in on you has been overdone but the thing i'm happy about is that it's not overused audio like burning scarecrow and hellfire scarecrow is pretty much the same thing except they are a different color i want to say hellfire scarecrow wait no Inferno Scarecrow is green, correct Correct me if I'm wrong. And of course, like, an idea that I, and of course, like, I have a red version idea called Hellfire Scarecrow. Like, but this time, but that idea, I think it would be, like, appropriate if Spirit Halloween had a version for themselves. And that being a red version, and that being my idea for a red version. So, yeah. Ne next up, Jack Skellington. And, of course, to give the warning, if this part gets muted, that's because it got copyright claimed. If you're looking for a skyscraping scare, no one stands taller than the Pumpkin King. At 13 frightening feet, the giant Jack Skellington towers over all. Never one to underdress, this devilish dandy is decked out in his classic black pinstripe suit. With a wide bat-like bow tie stretching far past his slender shoulders. There are few who deny it. What I do, I am the best. For my talents are renowned far and wide. As night falls, color-changing LEDs bring some much-needed color to his bone-white body glowing brightly all night long. Trigger his motion sensor and his skeleton skull begins to turn, bringing this secret Santa into the land of the living once again. His jagged jaw opens and his haunted head moves from side to side as he quotes some of the most memorable moments from everyone's favorite nightmare. And I, Jack, the Pumpkin King have grown so tired of the same old thing. And if his first face doesn't feel festively frightening enough, remove and replace for a new Halloween Town attitude, playful to sinister with the interchangeable faceplate. Don't bother telling the Pumpkin King what you want for Christmas this year. Naughty or nice, he'll see to it this nightmare is your last. Happy Halloween, and thanks for shopping at the Home Depot. Alright, I'm happy that Jack Sc I'm happy that a retail's giving Jack Skellington a round two. Alright. When did the movie release? 
No, not the Nightmare Before Christmas. Just, just this one. Okay. 1993. Okay, okay. 1993. Let's do some calculations over here. All right. 1993 minus 2023. Oh, damn. Okay, Home Depot celebrating its 30 year anniversary. Okay, okay, I see you. Like, Jack Skeleton in the background, bro. Let's go. Oh, yeah, that's three Halloween. Re well, no, two related horror characters. Well, Jack Skeleton is not horror. He's just. It's just family, family friendly Halloween. And of course, like, Danny Elfman is Jack Skellington when he's singing. And the voice when he's not singing is Chris Serlington. And wh one of my best guesses on to why is because he could have accidentally damaged his voice vocals. I'm not 100% sure. I'm probably going to have, have to do some research on that. Or I could have just ask him to Tim Burton himself when I meet him in person. And speaking of that, I know Mars Attack. I've seen that there's a Mars Attack leak in the Spirit Halloween community. But I'm not going to say what it is. But with the fact that it's a Tim Burton movie, I'm, I would be willing to give that movie a chance. Because I fucking love Tim Burton's movies. But I haven't seen Edward Scissorhand yet. But I have seen Alice in Wonderland, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, Corpse Bride, The Nightmare Before Christmas. I've seen a bit of Beetlejuice. And and I've also seen the live action Alice in Wonderland. That movie was awesome. Alright. Oh, shit. I'll pause. Legend has it, it's the last thing you see before you die. A spectral vision towering above you, hovering high in the air. At 12 feet tall, the 12-foot towering ghost looms largest in almost any deathly display. This makes sense. Choose from multiple lighting patterns. Everything from a fearsome flash to a bone-chilling blue bath. Oozing with bright, energy-efficient LED light. This spectacular spook is not one to stay shrouded in the darkness. Its broad metal base provides Dude, that a would be strong awesome foundation see in a black light room or a dark room. And assembly is easy, even at great heights. While terrifying trick-or-treaters is all in good fun, the 12-foot towering ghost has but one true purpose in this earthly realm. To suck the final breath of life from your lips before you're taken with it eternally to the underworld happy halloween and thanks for shopping at the home depot okay hold that thought on the on being dragged to your underworld part like if someone dies they only go to hell if they've done something wrong in life. Or if there is some fucked up stuff. Alright. Protection. Okay, no recent actions, that's good. Alright, look. Vector reactions, let's go. Meet Mr. Teddy. Mr. Teddy just loves head pads. There's more to the four and a half feet animated possessed penny that meets the eye. Dressed in her best and holding her precious Mr. Teddy, this gregarious little girl is eager to make some new friends and she'll do anything to keep them. One wrong step and Penny's bright LED lit eyes suddenly begin to change. Her moving arms rip Mr. Teddy's head from his shoulders as her voice shifts and drops, a dormant demonic spirit taking over. I don't want to share my toys. If I can't have Teddy to myself... No one can. <laughs> if a 
fun is what possessed Penny doll. wants, the cracks then fun is what possessed Penny gets. Happy Halloween, and thanks for shopping at the Home Depot. Damn. That shit, that shit look good. <laughs> like, I don't know what to say. Like, It honestly feels like that the demonic voice has been overused. That's the only thing that I have a downside with. But the idea, and also another downside, is that it doesn't make sense on the idea of, like, opening your eyes, like, down. Like... I, w I would have liked it better if it was like a bit realistic, just like close the eyes and then just pretty much be like a fine phrase thing, just like when you blink, you just see the endoskeleton lights and when you blink again, it's normal eyes, alright? I have been sent to exterminate you weak humans. It is pointless to resist. We are superior. In the battle of man versus machine, no THD one stands a chance like... against THD 3000. I'm not really a fan of that. Sent name back in time to eradicate humankind, this cold, calculated killing machine will stop at nothing in his quest to search and destroy. Its seven foot tall bionic body radiates with bright, energy-efficient LED light, casting shadows on fleshy and forlorn trick-or-treaters as it prepares them for processing. Those calculations are captured two ways, a big blinking humanoid eye and a laser that scans red. His left arm was lost years ago, replaced with a full-size bionic blue blade while his right hand is scarred with the terror of his technical transformation. Cables, coils, and cords in the neck and chest keep this cyborg mechanized and mean. Get this robot to rock and its programming kicks in. Servo motors in the neck, arms, and head bring this sadistic cyborg into action as its systems calibrate and it begins to speak. Your chances of escape are less than 1%. Goodbye. For THD 3000, the world is written in ones and zeros, and you are nothing more than a simple subtraction. Happy Halloween, and thanks for shopping. At the Home Depot. Okay, so... In my opinion, he's not scary Halloween-wise. He is a menace to... He looks like a menace to society. Like, matter of fact... He gives me Terminator vibes. And that's the thing I like. But the thing is that I don't really feel like that... How do I, how do I wear this shit? I spend, like, he doesn't, like, feel like a Halloween character. He's more so of a science fiction action character. But you know what? I can let that slide. Like, I can excuse that. Like. It looks really good, but if I had this guy, it's not going to be for Halloween purposes. It's going to be for all year round purposes. Like, I don't give a shit what people say. Like, if you get this guy, you can just throw him into, like, some sort of attraction that you can have open all year round.
And of course, like, there are, like, some alien characters that you can, like, pull off some Halloween stuff with. So, yeah. Next, next one. What do you call someone that steals a bunch of wood? A lumberjack! <laughs> or how about Sinister Steve? That has a nice ring to it. Strapped with his own belt tools, this horrible handyman stands just four and a half feet tall. But what he lacks in height, he more than makes up for in fright. Bright orange locks shock from his head, wearing faded prankster powder on his face, dressed in a dirty, spattered two-tone costume. Steve looks like he could use a little TLC himself, but activate this cringy clown and he's quick with a joke. His head turns from side to side, his arms flail up and down, and his manic mouth moves with the words. Let's test out my new stun finder! Looks like I'm a stud! <laughs> Not bad. But one look at his wrinkled, weathered face, his long set of jagged yellow teeth, and his bright LED lit eyes, and you know that it's not all fun and games for this Joker. Hey! You should go check out the prices on new carpet, wood, and tile! The prices floored me! <laughs> and don't forget his hammer, screwdriver, and ruler. Even the five-foot animated Sinister Steve knows that the best builders measure twice and only cut once. Happy Halloween, and thanks for shopping at the Home Depot. <laughs> like, I like the idea of the character design, but his jokes are pretty cr but the narrator said himself that his jokes are cringe. And 90% of the time, cringe is not funny, depending on what type of cringe it is. Yeah. There once was a skeleton maid who made all the children afraid. <laughs> if you're looking for a little help, the five and a half foot Marie meddling maid is to die for. More crypt keeper than housekeeper, one look at her tattered dress, and you know this bare boned beauty has spent a lifetime or two in grueling service. But she's had enough of all that, and now with feather duster in hand, Marie is ready to clean house. Plug her in, and her tired, sunken eyes glow red with rage, brightly lit by energy-efficient LEDs. Trigger her motion sensor, and the bottle she brandishes swings up and down in her ancient arm as her jaw begins to move, sinking with seven spine-tingling sayings. Seems that the more I dust, the more spider webs that appear. And there's always so much blood to clean. No rest for the wicked, and clicking her ruby red slippers together won't work either. The six foot animated Marie meddling maid is positively buried in her work. And the murder and mayhem and mobbing is only just the beginning. I've been worked clear to the bone. Why, you can nearly see right through me. <laughs> Happy Halloween, and thanks for shopping at the Home Depot. Like my... Okay. That one is the second to worst one. Like, Marsh Monster, I still stick to my opinion on this. He's the worst for Home Depot's lineup. And for Spirit Halloweens, they, I don't, oh, I, like, they, it's not, this one's not the worst one. Like, it's not good, but it's not bad neither, but Gordo's in last place. Not because he's a bad animatronic, he's not good, but he's not bad neither. He's neither good nor bad. He's just there. Alright. Last one.
Consider like yourself. my dolly? You can hold her if you want. But don't upset her. One wrong move around the sitter of the souls, and you'll wish you were already dead. Standing five and a half feet tall, and outfitted in a tattered, stained farm dress, this ghoulish girl looks more last house on the left than little house on the prairie. A burlap bag sewn around her head hides the horror beneath, leaving only two blood-red LED lit eyes, a bottomless black mouth. She cradles a weathered homemade rag doll in her arms. Step up to this bad blood babysitter, and she rocks her dolly from side to side, turning her head to greet you. Bring around the rosy a pocket full Wait, pan Asian of creations? Ashes, I thought ashes, these guys were out of it. You will fall down. <laughs> Oh, you'll fall down all right. Six feet down. Happy Halloween. And thanks for shopping at the Home Depot. All right. For these animatronics so far, like T hundred AK THD three thousand also known as Cold Hate so far has the crown for best Home Depot Halloween twenty twenty three animatronic. So yeah. And of course like, from when I said that this will be the last video before Horror Game Season 2023, I'm not 100% sure if that will be true or not. Bummed, but I'm saying as a just in case, if not, then it's either going to be Lowe's or Party City. That's going to be the last one. Or they, or it could be, or it could come out at, uh, at the same time. Or both of these videos can come out at the same time. So, yeah, thank you for watching this video. Thumbs up if you liked it, and subscribe to the channel if you want to see some more content, and we'll see you fellas in the next video. Until next time.